Hey everyone, Eric here. And today, the day that this video is launching to YouTube, it's our Independence Day here in the United States. So in honor of that, we're going to model an American flag. Now, I know an American flag or a flag in general might seem kind of simple, but when you really think about being precise with your geometry and copying things like stars or stripes that are repetitive, there's actually a little bit of not only thought that has to go into it to get it right, but also it's a really good use of just kind of reinforcing the basic tools. So that's what we're going to do. Um, let's just go ahead and get right to it. So the first thing I need to do is, you can see I've got my flagpole here. So the idea is once we have our flag, we will we'll hoist it, we'll put it up. Um, I'm gonna switch right now into, I'm gonna start drawing when I draft, I like to kind of do it in plan view. So I'm gonna go, let's go camera, standard views, top. So now I'm in top view, you can see there's my flagpole. Now what we need to do is start with sort of the basic shape of the flag. Now I know that, uh, at least the United States or the American flag is going to be approximately three by five in its proportions. So I might go five foot comma three foot. And, you know, kind of a rule of thumb is to draw bigger than you need to. You can always shrink or change the scale later. So I'm actually going to do that now. I'm actually going to scale this up by three. And then if I want to bring that down, I can. But at least I know that my proportions are correct. So where to start here? The first thing I need to do is kind of uh, decide where the stars in the stars and stripes go, which is sort of a box off to the side. If I draw a midpoint, if I hover with my line tool, I can kind of split this in half. And I know that this is, uh, I know that this box, the blue box where the stars go is going to be 80% of halfway. So I'm going to do a quick measurement. That is, if I check my measurements box, seven and a half feet, 80% of that, believe it or not, it works out to six feet. So I'm just going to start from this end. And I'm going to use my move plus my modifier to make a copy of this line. I'm going to go over six feet. Now I know where I can get rid of this. That was just a reference. So I knew kind of dimensionally, you know, how big I want to go. So from here, let's do some stripes. Now, for those that don't know, the American flag actually has 13 of them. So I'm going to just grab both of these two lines. You can see it broke. The bottom edge broke when we drew that sort of 80% divider line. And I'm going to switch again, move plus modifier. I'm going to grab this corner, lift this up, and I'm going to divide this by 13. So I'm just going to double check just to make sure my math is correct. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's correct. And I know that there are six um, um, from the bottom up is six stripes, and I know from the top down is seven. So I'm going to count um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then I'm going to go ahead and erase these because this is sort of the blue box that our stars will sit in. And then they don't need those because those stripes run all the way across. So you can see now we've got the basic shape. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit if that helps you at home. We have basically the basic shape. That was pretty. That was pretty. Um, that was pretty good start. Let's move on to the stars. I'm going to slide this over and I'm going to start with my, it's just my basically my polygon tool. I think this is maybe the easiest way to do this. I'm going to click anywhere. I'm not really too concerned about the size. Um, I do, however, want, I will scale it afterwards. So I'll draw it kind of nice and big. And I'm channeling my elementary school days. I think when I first learned how to draw a star by just crossing these points, essentially, just by connecting tip to tip um, or corner to corner of a pentagon. And I'm going to delete the outside lines using the eraser tool and the inside lines again using the eraser tool. So now I have a star. I know it's too big. I'm going to make it a component because anytime you have more than one of something, by default, just out of habit, I'll make it a component. So I know this is too big. I'm just going to, I just drew it big. I'm going to scale it down. I still don't know if that's the right scale. I'm going to go ahead and uh, scale it again probably in just a minute. But let's use that as a starting point. So for those that don't know, we have 50 stars and they represent 50 states here in the United States. So what I need to do is I need to have 11 across and then I'm going to do um, sort of alternating five and four um, down, which would be sort of along the, uh, the Y axis. So what I want to do is maybe shrink this down one more time, just because I already know that's a little bit too large. I'm not worried too much about the placement. All I need to know um, is that I need to start in this corner. And I want to grab this here 
and I'm going to pull this over uh, to what is about the same distance, and I'm going to use the divide tool. So if you check my measurements box, I'm going to say divide by 10. And the reason why is because if I select these, I'm dividing by 10 because I already had one. And that'll give me 11 components. So that's perfect. Here again, um, if I knew exactly the d dimension I was working with, I can hit the, uh, you can hit the modifier. I, I'm hitting the modifier, which is option um, on a Mac. I believe it's control on a PC. Um, and then what that'll do is it'll change that I'm centering, I'm scaling from the middle. And that's a good thing to do for the star. In this case, I want sort of the, the all of the, the edges to the corners to line up. Okay, so now that we've got that array copied, we need to do another array, but this time instead of horizontal, vertical. I'm gonna use the move copy tool and I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it for this step. I'm gonna move this star down to what looks to be about equal distance. And I wanna divide that by four. And the reason why is because I need five copies. So if I select those, now five should be easy for me to count, just in case, five components, that's perfect. Now, the next thing I need to do is shift this one down. I would like it centered between here and here. I don't know where that center line is. If I just kind of draw a line from here to here, I'm just gonna kind of say that that's the midpoint. Now, I'm not sure if that's right, but I'm gonna call that right. I'm using lines instead of guides because I'm just gonna delete them after. I feel like it's faster for me. Um, I know that we all have our personal preferences there. I'm gonna grab this one, I'm going to use that same move modifier. You can see I'm just using the same sort of basic tools over and over again. This time, divide that by three. So I have my row of five and I have my row of four. I don't need any of these, only that last one because it tells me where to stop. Because we already did that distance, that measurement, it's going to tell me where to stop. I'm going to grab both of these here. Don't need to group them, but I guess if I wanted to, I could. So the next thing to do is we're going to copy all of these together this time. I'm going to grab this. Now we only have uh, six on the top row. We did 11, but that's because we had five in the middle and six. So this time I'm going to do it differently. Instead of doing 11, I'm going to copy this over. I'm going to divide this by five, which is going to give me six rows on the top. And it's going to give me, um, again, I've got five on sort of this in between row here. And this one was an extra one. I'm going to go ahead and select each one of those and delete those. And I know that this one's an extra one too, because I left that one. So if I did that right, let's grab all of these. And I'm going to say entity info, 50 components for 50 stars. That is fantastic. So that was the first step in the process. I'm going to group that. You're going to see why in just a second. Now I like this flag, but if I copied this and put it on my flagpole right now, it would look a little stale because, you know, usually there's a breeze blowing and the flag has a little bit of movement and whatnot. So in this case, let's do that. Let's go the extra step of giving this a little bit of movement. I went ahead and copied, not copied, I went ahead and used the rectangle tool to trace the outline so that I know that this is sort of the exact same proportions as the one above. If it's easier for you to see, I'm going to switch to perspective mode just for this step. And what I want to do is I want to create something that has a wave to it. So I'm going to use this as just kind of a temporary guide, this little extrusion box here. And then, and the reason why I'm doing that is I'm really just wanting to create some arcs. So I'm using the arc tool. I don't know, it depends on how far I want the wave. It may be too much, but what I could do is I could always um, come back here. I could always come back and rescale it. So if I wanted to do something like, like that, and then I wanted to come over here and, and do something like this. I'm not sure exactly what I'm what I'm doing other than the fact that I want that to be there and I kind of want that to be there. And you'll see why in just a second. Let me see if I can get that again. There we go. Because what I really don't what I really need is just this sort of wave form here. And I'm going to leave that line. You'll see why in just a second. I'm going to leave a line there. That's what I wanted. I wanted a wave because I wanted to push pull this over and push pull this over. And then there you go. I don't need any of this extra stuff. I really, because the flag in this case, I'm going to pretend, I know it's got a thickness in real life, but I'm going to pretend that it doesn't for this example. Let's see if we can make this one face instead of three. I'm going to open up my soften and smooth edges and just kind of push that a little bit and hope that that did sort of heal it or seal it, so to speak. So that's it. From here, we're going to drape the line work that we've created on our flat flag. 
I'm going to bring that down onto our curved flag. For this, we're going to need sandbox tools. And I'm going to select this and I'm going to say drape it using the drape tool here and drape it onto this curved mesh. Now, I already know I've done this before, so I already knew that this was not going to work for the stars, and I don't know why exactly. Sometimes, you know, with the sandbox tools or the drape tool, it does things, you know, it has a mind of its own. I think it's related to the fact that they're components. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the component instances. I'm going to copy them, come out of my group. I'm going to paste them in place and move them down along the blue axis and explode them. Now that's why I made a copy because maybe I wanted to keep my original component intact. And then let's try this again, drape and stars. And there you go, it worked. Don't need those, that was just temporary. Don't need this, I'm gonna hide it in case I want it later, just in case, you know, to be safe. But that's it. Let's put a splash of color on this bad boy. We're going to start with red and we're gonna alternate down as we go. And then we're going to switch over to white. Now it's already white. Uh, the reason why it's showing like this is because my shadow settings are darker. So actually I don't need to paint that white. I could just leave it white if I wanted to. And then what we can do is come over here and maybe pick a blue. So if I group that all together, flip that on its horizontal, on its vertical, flip it vertically 90 degrees. And I'm going to grab a corner here Let's see here. And we're going to, I'm going to grab a copy, but yeah, I don't have to. I could have just moved it, you know, maybe offset that by two or maybe three inches. Just kind of looks like it's floating a little bit. And I don't need that one. I'm going to delete that. And I don't know about you, but I think our flag looks pretty good. So I'm going to wrap up by switching my style over to one that I already have set up. It's a watermark. We're going to finish this off in some style, literally and set the camera to two point perspective. And now I am ready to celebrate my holiday. So again, I started this video saying that the flag really sounds kind of simple, but when you looked at all those steps, especially the fact that there's some math involved, the fact that we want to be precise and accurate. So we want to make things that make sure that we're using the copy by divide so that we know things are equally spaced. This is just such a, an important fundamental tool. And you can see that once uh, you know it and you kind of mastered it, it, you can apply that to so many different things. So in this case, we applied it to a flag and we're gonna go ahead and give a salute and go watch the fireworks show. So hope everyone has a great holiday if you're celebrating. Other than that, have a great um, day. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Give me a comment. You know, let me know what you thought. We'll keep that conversation going there and I will see you next time.